Aspiration is what you need to get you through in life. It's Leave Your Dreams with me, Esther Michael Emma. This is a show that empowers you to believe in yourself. Dream it, see it, believe it, it's all in you. Catch it on this channel every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and be When somebody tells you that it cannot be done, it's a reflection of their limitation, not yours. Everything and anything is possible when you believe. Welcome to yet another exciting moment on Live Your Dreams with me, Esther Michael Emma. And today in this program, I'm going to be speaking to an advisor, a mother, and a psychologist. She'll be taking us through her story. Stay with me and be inspired. Don't forget, you're watching Star TV Network. We'll be right back. Aspiration is what you need to get you through in life. It's Leave Your Dreams with me, Esther Michael Emma. This is a show that empowers you to believe in yourself. Dream it, see it, believe it, it's all in you. Catch it on this channel every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and be Welcome back, this is Leave Your Dreams and this is a program that tells you not to give up on your dreams, on your goals, on your aspirations. Of course, I'm Esther Michael Emma and you're still watching Star TV. With me today in the program, I have Madam Nasu Fofana. I love her middle name, which is Genevieve. <laughs> and she's here with me today, she's going to tell us all about it. Welcome to the program. Thank you. It's so Esther. good to have you. And Thank you very much. Several calls. <laughs> but I'm happy you're here on the program. So quickly, we're going to start with your personals. Um, tell us, um, who did you always think you'd become? I always knew I'd become somebody who will be an asset to my society and asset to the global movement for women and girls empowerment. Um, I just knew that from a very, very, very early age. What was your drive? How did you know that? What, what, what was around you that made you feel like you needed to be a voice for women? I was not very happy with the status of my mother and my aunts around me growing up in Kenema um, because my mother and my father separated when I was quite early, sort of about five. Um, but it wasn't that bad. I mean, I had a very beautiful relationship with my father and my mother as well. So, uh, but what I didn't like, I mean, she went to secondary school up to about form three at the QRS. but. Um, she is, is a very kind person and very, very hospitable. But I think people took advantage of her kindness and um, wanted to um, really exploit that kindness. And I saw that as a child and I was very, very um, militant about the way, you know, people were treating her. She would wash clothes for, you know, her contemporaries. Um, she would go around trying to solicit her to support us even though my father was also supporting but our mother just had very high aspirations especially for me being her eldest child and um i i was not very comfortable with that because i didn't like the looks and the faces of certain people so i was determined to say this woman is going to be somebody one day and the only way that's going to happen was that i'm not going to stop in form three no. i am actually going to have an education and i'm going to change her life and the lives of all my aunties. So this, this, is, this is how it sort of came about, and it's never gone away. Right. As a little girl or as a teenager, as a young, young adult, what were your obstacles going up, and how did, you, um, what, how did you try over them, and how did you come out defeating them, your fears? Um, as a young girl, you know, I've always had a very strong personality and um, my mother can attest to that, my siblings, um, my family can attest to that. I've always had a very, very strong personality. I have always interpreted challenges as um, a growth pole, you know, I'm going to grow out of this. So I really don't look at challenges as a negative concept. I look at challenges as a way of improving myself and doing um, something more, something I want to do. Growing up, I remember as, as a five-year-old, um, I remember giving um, flowers to the late President Shaka Stevens in Kenema. And I looked up at him and said, you know, he, he, of course he was very tall. And, but I vividly remember looking at him and thinking, ah, oh, I, 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 like, I like him. And, um, you know, my mother saw that. And every time she would say to me, why were you looking at him like that? But I, there was something around him that made me feel like, um, you know, he was the highest. Obviously, he was a very powerful person. I couldn't quite, con um, um, you know, 
read between the lines of who he really was. But I knew he was important because everybody was fussing around him. Um, but I wanted um, to do something that will also get, get his attention, get his attention, or get people's attention, okay. but something good. Okay. okay. So, um, and he was a very powerful man, and I just really wanted to also explore, you what know, it feels what it feels. Yeah. Well, yes. And um, how does he feel? I think it was more about how, how does he, he feel. feel. So, the position he was at. Yes. And um, that inspired me to basically, um, you know, start thinking big, okay? So that moment made me feel like I can be big as well, yeah. maybe like him. Okay. And so the, the challenge is, I think, in terms of men mm -hmm. and my perception of men, mm -hmm. I think I probably took it from that point and really thought, okay, fine. He's really, he's a big man and um, I'm a, you know, midget small girl oh. here. But, you know, I can also do you something like him. him. So um, the challenges in terms of um, dealing with my life, um, as a teenager, of course, I was boisterous. You know, um, <laughs> I... You seem to still have a lot of it, though. Yes, I, I, I mean, this is me, you know. <laughs> you're not, that is not going to go away, <laughs> for goodness sake. And, and it, it shouldn't. Why should it? I wanted to go down into the story a little bit. How yes. did you get the flower? Where did you get it from? <laughs> um, well, you know, those days, you know, I mean... I mean we, so we, you just... You just sat down and thought to yourself, I need to get to this. No, I was, I mean, when girls, when little girls, when dignitaries come, oh. I mean, you, you are, you Allowed. are positioned. Okay. No, 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 I was, it was an official thing. Oh, okay. So, okay. you know, I was chosen, you know, so I was very proud. I see, you're yes. always favored, you know. Well, God and I think my attitude and I think, um, no, I'm just, I, I've always been very outspoken. So if I see something and I really like it, I'm going to request. So I want to, I want that. So I'm, I'm very competitive. Is good. Yes. I think that's that's a drive to life. We yes. all compete in one way or the other. Yeah. It's just we need to do it in, in a very um would I say mature, conducive or healthy way. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yes. In three words, yeah. who is Nasu Fofana? Nasu is a very self driven and motivated person. She is an a fantastic mother. Um, uh, yes, a yes, she's. I am a fantastic mother, and uh, yeah, my, my daughter can proud not to say that. absolutely, absolutely. Um, my daughter will attest to that. Mm. Um, and I, I am, I am a go getter, yeah, which, which is very important. Yeah, um, I would want to ask, um, what's your philosophy about life? Life is, um, you know, first of all, you need to stay focused on, um, uh, your dreams, your goals and aspirations, and don't be shaken. Um, because the way, the way I see life is like um, you have the TV set or you have your camera set here, mm -hmm. and um, you've got different channels, but the remote control is lying there. If you take that remote control, so now you're in my house and I say, Esther Michael, welcome to my house, um, and I'm watching CNN or I'm watching Star TV, and you say to me, okay, Madam Fofana, could I just watch something okay. else? I really like this other channel. You know, I loan you. I mean, it is mine, right? Yes. I give it to you. And um, I need to let you know that it is not yours. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that it is my property. So my life is my life. If I loan my life to you at some point, you need to understand that it is temporary. <laughs> I know. But you should always keep the remote control. And I've always kept the remote control of my life. You cannot change my channel. It is my responsibility. So it's philosophy is keep the remote control. Keep the remote control. Of your life. Yes, give it to nobody else. You know, it is yours. Yeah. Because if you give it to Esther, she's going to change very different channels, and you might not be comfortable with those channels. Okay. And if I just want to watch my boring channel, you know, that's that's you know, we can negotiate, but it is mine. It's mine. Yes. I, I can tell keep you know. What? It's done. You're, yes. you're done watching whatever you want to watch. It's time for me to watch what I yes, want. Yes, I should be able to take that remote control without you being offended. Yes. Remember, you are in my house. Mm -hmm. So my life is my life. Okay, <laughs> this I is. I get it. I get it. That's that's that's. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I'm getting to feel uncomfortable. You're in my house. Yes, I'm in your house. Thank you yeah, for so, me. so so the you know your life is your house. Yes. And you, you know you should be in control of it. You should take ownership. Never allow other people to come into your life and take control of your life. Mm -hmm. When you do that, I mean, it's it's just it's it's unhealthy. Mm -hmm. It creates so many other stresses, uh, you know, that you you do. Yes. So if you're in control of your life, you can negotiate with people. True. At the end of the day, then box talks with you, huh? True. 
when you're feeling sad, it's you that feels it more than That's anybody right. else. So why do you allow That's other people shit. to come in and change the channel as they wish? Mm. Keep the remote control. I love that. Keep the remote <laughs> control. Okay, um, you was the gender advisor to the president of Sierra Leone. Yeah. At that time you were in that position, how did it affect you as a person? Um, it was a very great experience. Um, I just um, uh, um, concluded my assignment officially on the 31st, but it was actually Monday that I did my final handing over. So I've still been doing things around the State House. It was an excellent opportunity, um, a platform that was well worth taking and using to the greatest advantage that I could ever. I mean, this is the is the is the seat of power i mean yeah. you are close you are actually directly working with the the head of state i don't know this is not a position that is all over the place um globally as well mm -hmm. so um i feel very privileged i was very humbled mm -hmm. by the fact that out of you know so many Lots. women mm -hmm. um i was given that opportunity so i never took it for granted and it was a very good experience. What do you think brought you to that point, or took you to that point of position? Um, the status of women and girls in this country. Mm -hmm. I want you to know and to let any woman, uh, every woman mm -hmm. or girl in Sierra Leone know that um, decisions are made at the heart of government. Mm -hmm. You can have a lot of money in the private sector. You can be in civil society. We're all supposed to work together. But the l our lives are decided at the heart of government. So if you really want to impact and you want to effect change, you hit the nerve center. Mm -hmm. And the nerve center is the presidency. So sitting there, um, after looking at the way um, the status of women um, were going, you know, we've been marginalized in so many ways, um, you know, high illiteracy, um, gross um, abuse Abuse. of women and girls. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they, we, we have been challenged in all areas including our cultural societies etc etc so i basically i was working at the un and um uh, the president had done a reshuffle okay. and um, the minister of gender then um was um you know w was um not no longer there and i wrote him a letter while i was in the un to say um mr president you know this is a very serious issue mm -hmm. the letter was dated 11th of um, august mm -hmm. 2011 if I can remember. And um, I just wrote him a letter as a, as a private citizen to say, I'm you know, concerned. you cannot, I'm concerned and, you know, you cannot just put anybody in this ministry. I mean, this ministry is way too important mm -hmm. and therefore we need somebody who is very focused, who is sensitive to the issues of women and girls. And um, that's, after, after him, after that minister, um, a very fine minister came on board, Minister Stephen Gouger, who did an excellent job, who worked collaboratively with um, almost all institutions. And we, we, we started seeing progress. Mm -hmm. And it was actually um, Minister Gouger and uh, his um, then deputy, Madam Oya Sanko, we all started talking about, you know, um, how do we, again, raise the status of um, women's mm -hmm. issues. And so um, uh, that gave me the, 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 the motivation to go after uh, the president. Yes, I, and, and I met him in Kenema again. You see, Kenema is very important for me. I wasn't born. I was born in um, Pujon, but I grew up um, also in Kenema. Yes, what I was. What are you? I'm a Mende girl. Oh, oh that's so tough. <laughs> Mende Nya. Uh, yeah. A very <laughs> proud woman of Wanjoma. Jama. Okay. for a Mende Creole. Okay. You, I, you know? My decent yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> but yeah, so um, then, you know, I, I was fortunate to have audience with the president mm -hmm. in, um, in Kenema um, around April 2012. And we had a very, very, we had a dialogue like you and I were speaking very open. And um, I, was, I was really interested in wanting to know when he, you know, went to all these big um, events like the International Women's Day mm -hmm. and the women gave him position papers, who followed up, what's happened, happened. you know, how, how well is he informed what? really on a daily basis or weekly basis on what's progress, what is happening. happening. And um, really he, he bought the idea, but I really didn't say to Mr. President, give me a job. No. Because at that point I had two consultancies and they were pretty good, you know, from um, two international institutions um, waiting for me. 
Um, but I always wanted to work for my country. And so that is how that whole thing started. And um, he invited me to come to the State House, and the rest is history. Yes, yes. that's true. What, what effects, what major effects do you, do you think you, you made, or what impacts did you, did you, do you think you made during those times you were, you were in service? You see, I want to state clearly that um, you, you can only make impact if you have the right support and the political will. Um, for me, in my position, I had the, the, the strongest support, which was really the backing of the president in the, you know, in, 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 the, um, in the execution of my mandate, which was quite clear. Um, so with that support, I was able to do quite a number of things. And I will never really do things without his signature. Sure. So, I mean, again, that is the support. But one um, major achievement, I would say, is actually um, um, contributing mm. to raising more awareness about gender issues. And one major, major way I believe I did that was actually pioneering mm. the now Pillar 8, which is the baby of the Agenda for Prosperity. That was um, something that I proposed at the ADB in June 2012, and um, a lot of people, including our development partners, did not believe in it. I had to join a team of seven men who were leaders of the pillar leads of the other seven um, pillars, and I came in strongly and um, used, um, obviously, my technical expertise, but also my charm and we got to be like, we got it, but it, 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 it was very good, yeah. really something that glows really around you, like, strongly, which is um, your, your confidence, your sense, your belief, which is one reason why this show has been, you know, been, been created, been produced, so people can understand the reason or the necessity as to having confidence mm -hmm. and trust and believe in themselves, which yeah. is what I can really, really see through you. And, um... Let's let's leave that away our side. You know, we've really talked about you and and um, how strong you've been. Tell me what what you do as Nasu Jennifer before for now. When you want to relax, you know. What <laughs> well, you should have come in last night. You you <laughs> yes, you should have come for this interview last night. Um, I I I entertain myself. Okay. You know, I'm just one of those people who, um, uh, again, I invite people in my life if I want them to be there. But I'm, 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 I'm very content. So I, every day after work or whatever I'm doing, I come in, um, I'll get a glass of wine mm -hmm. or a glass of champagne. Okay. I do so. I buy the things that I can afford that I love. Okay. I like to surround myself with comfortable things that I enjoy. Okay. I really love my own company. I mean, I can really entertain myself okay but again i like to have people i'm a very people person, person. but because i have this big um uh, sort of um oh, exaggerated yes. um um uh, or uh, outside okay. when i come back into my no, space don't, don't think it's exaggerated okay thank you <laughs> i'm i'm honored but when i come when i come home i i love to cook okay. so i really like cooking wow. um it's relaxing for you me I know. You see, I said you should have come yesterday. Um, <laughs> but okay, you will be. You're invited. I'm going to cook for you, and you will see uh, 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 the Mende cooking. Yes, I'll, I'll cook. I'll cook. So I'll and I love to listen to music. So African music, Sierra Leonean music, especially our traditional music, Ami Kalon, um, and I love jazz, and I like to dance. So you know, I will play my music. I have my wine. I'll dance. I'll just relax and then chat to one or two of my associates. But um, and then I love traveling. Oh. So I so yes, I love traveling. I have to go away to yeah, to to, to, cool to cool off. You know, ah, I know. Yeah. And um, of course, I like the company of all, mm -hmm. um, including I have lots of male friends. Okay. You know, um, uh, you it's know. Necessary. Yes, <laughs> yes. It, it's 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 a it's 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 a necessity yes. to 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 have. Your male friends. I, I speak a lot to, to men because um, I believe um, I get to understand the other side. As a gender expert, you need to be able to understand the live experiences of the okay. other yeah. sex, right? Sure, sure. Yes. I totally so, agree with yeah. you. And um, before we go on a short break, I'd like to know um, what are the things you rewrite in your life? Rewrite? Yes. I will not rewrite anything. 
Um, no, because. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, no, no, no. no. I, I certainly not because um, every chapter in my life, like I said to you in the beginning, is a growth pole. Hmm. I love that word. So, to actually go back and rewrite mm. will mean I am taking away something um, away made from you. that made me. You know, mm. so I will not rewrite anything. I will write about everything, um, but I will not rewrite. All right. Every situation or every challenge you find yourself in is a growth pole. And that's not so cool for now. You're still watching Leave Your Dreams with me, Esther Michael. And I don't go anywhere because it's just about started. We'll be right back. Previously on Leave Your Dreams. The right mentality as well. Mm. With that, you can go play. If you don't have that, then, you know, you're, you're not going to do well. Coming up next on Leave Your Dreams. A lot of people would look at me and think I grew up in money, I grew up in privilege, and I have it all. I did grow up in money, I did grow up in privilege. But between the years of 95 and 98, we lost all of it. We had nothing. My mother could barely put food on the table. Not many people know this, and a lot of people watching it would probably think I'm lying. But those of us, those who know us, and know our family. Welcome back, you're still watching Leave Your Dreams. I'm Esther Michael Emma. I still have the amazing Asu Genevieve Fofana with me on the program. Yes, still with you, Madam Fofana. Before we went on a short break, I wanted to ask, was there any time in your life where you felt like you were drifting away, where you weren't sure of what you wanted to do or who you wanted to become? And how did you get back on track if you ever felt that way at any point in time in your life? Very good question. Interesting. Um, I wouldn't say I drifted because, again, it was um, another episode of my life. But I think when I um, got, when I met my ex-husband, um, uh, we met in the UK and um, obviously got married and had my wonderful daughter, Jamie. Um, but the agreement was that um, I would go to university because I always wanted to go to university and obviously my parents didn't have the means you know after from five i've been living on my own since i was 17. okay so um pushing you know uh, pushing things to make sure that i really got an education was not easy i used to stand by christ church and you know looking at all the ladies who used to go up to frobe college i would stand at model i just didn't have the funds my parents didn't have the funds for me to go so when i met my um my ex-husband, um, we had a, a personal contract that I would go to school. I told him that um, going to school was important to me. And um, then we had our daughter. We moved to the U.S. And um, she turned four. And um, I wanted to go back, to, go school. back to school. And JJ really made it easier for me because one day she came from school. And, um, you know, I went there, got her. I would take her to school in the morning. Daddy would pick her up. And um, this little midget at four, she had her little pouch and I said, um, JJ, um, let mommy help you do your homework. And she looked at me in my face and said, mommy, oh mommy, you can't read and write. All you do is cook, clean and watch opera. <laughs> oh my God. Four. I mean, I was, I felt very low that this is the way my daughter sees me that all I do is cook clean because every I take her to school she comes home yes the house is clean she has good food and at four o'clock indeed I will be on the couch watching Oprah Winfrey so she that was she the routine she, knew, but she was yes and um, that really got me um, it woke me up I was upset and um, I said to my husband I need to go to school did you just hear what she said and he said, oh, you know, she's a child. I said, no, I have to go to school. So we started. If, if a kid at four can really read that or say that out, then imagine what somebody who's well. Yeah, but I mean, she, 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 she used, you, you see, kids at that age will tell you obviously what they think. True. And they will draw too. So mm -hmm. my, my niece who was also living in a house, she had pictures of her taking the pots from the basement, going upstairs. She, she did that to all of us. But um, that, was, that was how she saw us. Mm -hmm. So I feel in terms of drifting, being married and being in my marriage, I almost drifted away from my path. 
and um, even though I had it but I was very committed to my marriage I wanted it to work it, it worked I produced a beautiful daughter and um, <laughs> You know, there is no marriage that doesn't work, especially when you have children. You know, it, it, it worked. You know, we, we so, just so it works once, once they're kids, right? No, even if they are no kids, I mean, it worked. It you were there. You were married, anyway. uh, yes, yes, yes. So it, it worked. At some point in time, I believe in the institution of marriage, but I also believe that you know you need to check. You need to check out. You yeah. know, if it's not working, uh, I I don't believe in um killing myself um, just because of, you, you, know, you know the score, but that's my personal view. But um, I think that at that time, I believe that um, I was drifting away because I really wanted my marriage to stay on course. Um, once I got the inclination that um, my husband was not um, very um, enthusiastic um, about, you know, me doing... Uh, today I have a different interpretation but then that was my interpretation um i stood firm and i actually divorced my husband because i wanted to go to university That's yeah tough. it was but um i needed to achieve my goal so i'm not saying everybody should do that but i had to stay on course that, that's your own. It worked out for you. It, it, it doesn't. You're different, so it's not. It doesn't mean it work work out for anybody else. But you know, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of courage because yeah. you know I had no money. I had just my O levels from Methodist Secondary School, Kenema, and um, you know I had to. Kenema. Yes, I had to. <laughs> I had to. You know, uproot my daughter from her very comfortable surrounding yeah. back to London, and you know, as a single mother. So it wasn't easy. I, I went through my degrees um, as a single mother, as a single parent, and also while fighting divorce. So it was... Um, was it that easy getting away? No. Mm. I mean, if you've been with somebody emotionally, um, getting separated from any situation, especially emotional it's situations, is, it's very hard. But I think my coping mechanism was my, my education because I, I had no opportunity to, to start thinking of um, what is going on because I had to submit my assignments, I had to do this, and I had to work out. I needed to have a very good result. You know, I didn't want um, um, a, a degree that was useless. I wanted a, deg a degree that I could say, well, I was doing that mm -hmm. um, when um, when I was going through all of this. So for me, it was it was a very very um, challenging um, uh, time, but I was also energized by the by the push. Yeah. I, I needed to have a challenge. The, the satisfaction that I know what I'm going for. Yes. I, I, I'm heading towards it and I'm sure I'll get it. You know, yes. the belief, the faith. I, I think that was the push for you. Yes, and it, it was not easy. Don't get me wrong, it was it no. was psychologically very difficult, but <laughs> again I was studying psychology, so I think I used all you oh, know the, the, the modules. Yes. Deal with all your issues. Yes. Well I'm happy I'm happy you, you you got through it. And um I quickly um what are the things, or uh, would I say, what else do you think is left? What else do you think is left undone for you? What else do you think you need to get done, and uh, why? Esther, I'm, I'm 45 next year. Next, next month, I will be 46. Well, okay. You're very beautiful, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I feel very honored. Um, <laughs> you know, you're a very beautiful woman too. Am I? Yes, you are. Oh, um, <laughs> yes, but um, um, I, I, I take care of myself in my own little way. Um, I have a lot more to do. I think what I've done so far is just a preamble of what I believe my life is um, is worth living for. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I assess my situations as I go along. Mm -hmm. So I never thought I would work for government. I never thought I would work for the United Nations simply because, you know, I'm so outspoken and um, my mother was very very scared when I got the job at the state. I said, let her know, can't kill me, picking this emote. You know, but um, it's not like, <laughs> I don't just run my mouth. No. I, I, I open my mouth when it deserves opening. Yeah, and necessary. yes. Things that need to be addressed. Absolutely. And um, I don't like opening my mouth without action, audience. Yeah. Okay. There should be audience and there should be actions. And so um, what I have left, we have to take that journey, all of us together. But um, there's quite a lot left, and I think I'm even more determined than um, I have ever been. You know, we, the, the role of women needs to be respected in this country. The, 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 the status of our girls mm -hmm. need to be respected. We need to reproduce mm -hmm. and bring up many more Esther Michaels, many more Nasu Fofanas, 
<laughs> we, we, we need to, you know, but we cannot have our girls being abused and they have no, um, no, no, no recourse in our justice system because men have money mm -hmm. and they can go and buy their way through, mm -hmm. use power. I, I, I stand against something like that. You know, as, as young girls, we've all gone through that. Sure. Where, you know, these uncles and these, you know, I call them foolish men. I mean, if you're watching, you're foolish. <laughs> Any man who, who, who really thinks that, you know, you have to um, violate um, a girl or a woman, you're seriously foolish man. Okay. <laughs> um, <like> so <laughs> so, so I, I, I don't respect men like that. But sure. we, we have them in the community. We, do. we have them in our society. Mm -hmm. And it is just... It is, it is sickening. You know, we, we are doing well, but we need to do more, more as women. We need, our voices need to be heard. Right. We, cannot, we cannot be expectant. We expect them. You know, we have to do, do it. it. We have to stand up for it. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about, you know, doing what you believe in. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this whole issue of cognitive dissonance, you're thinking one thing, you're doing one thing, you don't want to do this because your political party will be upset mm -hmm. because, you know, that no, no, no. Oh. If you believe in something, do it. And the status of women and girls is mm -hmm. something I have believed in since my childhood. Nothing is going to stop me. And that's why I studied it, so I don't just open my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, I um, academically, I'm very well grounded in those issues. And personally, I'm very well grounded. So, you know, I've lived the various stages of being a woman, sure. married, unmarried, um, uh, you know. I don't say divorce. I would say um, uh, exit, <laughs> yeah, separated. <laughs> no, because you, I don't think you really get divorced from... Uh, well, it is there. It's just the paper. I think it's just the word for it. Yeah. No, my, my husband... My ex-husband is, is, is one of my, my strongest supporters now. And so, yes, there's a paper that says I'm no longer married to him, but I'm still carrying his name, and he will not take it from me. It's mine. Um, <laughs> Except if you want to give it up. Yes, exactly. But I think when you have children, mm. you know, you also need to understand the stability. And um, I, I don't believe in, in saying bad things about my partners. No. You know, my husband is never, you know, he doesn't say bad things about me. And he's my greatest supporter. He's a very good father. And I'm pleased that, you know, I produced a very beautiful daughter for him. Yeah. He's, he's, he's great. <laughs> yes. All right. What would you say for you has been the craziest moments of your life? <laughs> if you can remember any. <laughs> craziest moments is, uh, you know, when, <laughs> when you've been, you know, I, I got married in my 20s. And then went through divorce in my early 30s. And then I finished, because I went to university at 31. See that picture over there? Yeah. That was my post-separation picture, the one down there. Yes. You look so much like Genevieve in that picture. Uh, she looks like me. Yeah. <laughs> Tell her that. You. Yes, yes, she looks like me. Anyway, but um, no, no, no. She, she's a, she's a. She's a she, yes, we look alike, and we have a photo together, you know. Yeah, and uh, and she's, 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 she's a friend of um, a friend, Aisha, and um, we we met here when she was here some time ago. But um, so um, I finished university thirty five, thirty six. I finished my masters, mm -hmm. and boy, oh boy, I had all this freedom, know, right? you know. Huh not married, um, child is doing well, she was informal, and then she decided to go and live with her father. So I just had, uh, all the I, yes, I became, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's a teenager because I lived my teenagers, but I, I was relieving them. Um, yes, and ever since, I, you know, I have just been living on my own, and I have really, really had fun. So I traveled, I got myself nice things, I, you know, I had fun. I mean, I, I had fun. I discovered um, Nasu. No, I discovered right? Susu. I, I had fun. I would go out. I, I, I enjoyed myself. So I'm not phased now by a lot of things. I enjoyed myself. Gosh. My I wish I was yes. <laughs> Un until I think probably until I was until I turned forty when I when I came home, oh, okay. you know. And I'm still enjoying myself, you know. Okay. Um. Quickly, how you you your young girl, you know. Um, from Kenema, who lives in, or from Potloko, you said? Oh, no, no, Potloko. I'm not Potloko. Potloko, no, I'm not Timini. <laughs> I am not from Potloko, uh, even though I like people from, from Potloko. Potloko. Yes, okay, my body is from Potloko. You say you're Mende. You I am. You in Kenema, right? You yes, I was born in a very small um, village called Fuenduperi okay. in the Pujon district. Okay, yes, Pujon district. I'm a woman of Wanjama. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I'm the chairperson of the Women of Wanjama. Because, you know, women in Pujon, um, Pujon is one of the districts that have the highest rates of um, sexual violence against women, especially girls, rape, you know, our people there. We needed to stand up as women because they had used politics a lot to divide the women. And so um, two years ago, a year and a half ago, I went there and, you know, called um, our women and told them, you know, this is not about politics. This is about women. And we came together and formed the women of Wanjama. So I'm the chair with a very able executive and deputy chair. They're in Pujon, they're on the ground. I just go around looking for money to support their cause. <laughs> so we're working on a lot of initiatives. What, what does Wanjama mean? Ah, <laughs> you have to come to Pujon. <laughs> you have, to, you see, there are certain, no, you see, there are certain things you, you don't explain. explain. You have to live it. You have to have the experience. Right. You know? First of all, you have to have my shape. Ah. Okay, that one, I, I think I have to do some Botox talk. Okay, no, well, you see, uh, 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 one Jamamarian doesn't need it. We just have it in Naturally. abundance, yes. And, you know, we, we're, happy. <laughs> we're happy to share. <laughs> <laughs> what we'll do is we'll get you, we'll get a nice one Jama man to marry you. Ah, okay. And then you can produce some beautiful my, um, one, Jama, <laughs> one Jama women, one, one Jama young women. But no, uh, you have to leave it. You know, our hospitality, you know, the, our poise. I mean, we, you know, now. I think I'll get into too much trouble if I start talking, talking about, about, <laughs> about yeah. I talk for all women. No, when I say trouble, it's just that I have so many friends from, but everybody no. knows. When it comes to my women of Wanjama, W-O-W, huh? it's wow. So you say women of Wanjama, we say wow. wow. Women of Wanjama, wow. wow. Women of Wanjama, wow, wow, wow. wow. Yes, <laughs> you have to come to Pujan with me, okay? So that's the second premise. I'm going to cook. And I'm going to share the one gym experience. <laughs> yes. I'll be honored to be on that yes. trip. Okay. Um, personally, what are you looking forward to, you know, in terms of helping rebrand or recreate or reshape our women, young girls? I'm sorry. My heart breaks when I I know the the I know the reality of what we are facing. You know, I see how our young girls are being devalued, are being violated. And even though government has um, policies. policies, implementation is challenging. Because sure. at the forefront of implementation, mm -hmm. we have men. <laughs> I mean, and some of these men, Terrible. some of these men are the very men who perpetuate the, you know, violence. And they, they talk to each other. Let's, let's don't fool ourselves. Mm -hmm. Something happens to um, a, 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 a man commits a crime. Mm -hmm. um, they, they have their network. Women, we don't have that network. Okay? They have their network and they get away with it. Mm -hmm. You cannot be the only person fighting. If women Come. in Sierra Leone don't stand up to support each other and really take the issues of violence against women seriously. We have a president that believes in it. He's the head of state, but he's got so many other things to do. Mm. We as women need to remind him every day in our different capacities that we need you, we believe in you, we know you can support us. And there's a lot of pressure on him because of the stance he's taking against um, you know, towards violence, in, violence against women. Because there are certainly people who are in very top positions in this country, mm. and I, 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 I am really saying this with the best conviction, that don't believe in women's empowerment. Mm. So um, you, 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 you cannot just say the president is not doing this, the president is doing you know, He needs to have a team. So I think having a team of well-meaning men and women, mm. but women in particular, mm. To really take these issues seriously is how we're going to make an impact. If we just sit and basically have um, our advocacy sort of reactional or reactive, then it's, we're not going anywhere. I mean, girls are dying. Um, girls are being violated. Women have been raped. And the emotional and psychological trauma, you know, we don't even know how to assess that. And um, I feel very strongly about these issues. When I... Um, uh, finished my tenure at the State House, people have been saying to me, are you going back to the UN? Are you going overseas? No, I lived overseas for 20 years. I am home. 
I am not leaving. I mean, I am here. I am going to be here. I have my, um, uh, an NGO, United for Humanity. I will do things to it. I have my community. I have to find ways to support the government and to support the women and girls. It, you, you, how could we have half of the girls who finish, who, who enroll in JSS, um, you know, the primary, um, cannot go to the senior secondary school? I mean, they drop with, you know, um, teenage pregnancy just like that. And they get blamed. Yes. yes, I know that um, uh, we, we need to be able to, 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 to let the girls take responsibility. But knowing what I know as a psychologist in terms of adolescence development, um, as a teenager, a lot of biological things go on that you don't have control over. That doesn't give any man the right to violate you. But to our young people, you also need to sign a social contract. If you want to be Esther Michael, you want to be Nasu Fufanai, there is no reason why you should be getting pregnant. Okay? But it is difficult. But we all had to go through those challenges. I, was just, I just used my mouth as my biggest weapon. Did it, did it not happen to me? Did I not get pregnant when I was a teenager? I did, because we all make those mistakes. Yeah. And I think we need to stop talking about teenage pregnancy as if these young girls have just done bad. I would want to see how many women in this country who didn't in their teenage years, you know, make that mistake of, you know, some of them, it's their first experience and they get pregnant. But trust me, I had a very strong mother. You think I'm strong? Watch out for my mother. I mean, she was always looking here to see if it was beating, it was popping, you know. And um, she always made me very, very conscious about not getting pregnant. I mean, I was just surveillanced, you know, and they used to, to, to take us to the bundle bush to get us checked. So we had all those mechanisms that I used to. No, but, um, but um, I'm just saying that it's collective responsibility. Okay, the home... The society, we have to look at all the systems, you know, the micro systems and everything, you know. We, we cannot just say government. Yeah. We cannot just say the house. When we were growing up, we had community looking after us. Mm -hmm. We know it's difficult today, but this is a very passionate issue for me. And the status of our girls who are the future of our country is in their, their, their need of serious improvements without making um, concrete um, impact to lift the status of girls, for girls to go and have an education, but not just have an education and just sit home. We need them in the formal sector. Yes. We need CEOs. Yes. We need huge entrepreneurs. We need academics. Mm. We need young girls. We need the role models, and they need to be visible. So this is why I agreed to do this, because we need to be able to talk to our young people. And so I have a lot to do in my personal capacity, yeah. but I am also very open to be utilized mm -hmm. in any way that would um, support the status as a voice for young girls. And I'm really hoping to um, host a very important young women's conference okay. very soon at some point. Right. We need to talk to the young people. We cannot be making policies without their contribution what is it that they are facing and the young boys too mm -hmm. we need to understand things from their perspectives you know as for the old men <laughs> who do these really bad things anyway how na kam una gogoso but um it is just it is just it is just bad and you know i think we need to have a register for for um um uh, convicted um uh, um uh, um, uh, perpetrators <laughs> convicts okay if you are convicted in, in our law we should have um, i was trying to talk to the head of the fsu so we, we can have them mm. okay if you if you if you if you, we can have two categories mm. if you are if it's alleged we have you in that category if it's, if it's if you've been you? if you if you're a convict you know and look at what they pay mm. you know a man beats a woman and he pays one million and he thinks oh i don't pay i don't beat her i mean you're a convict mm -hmm. you know i had to stand up to somebody while i was working not long ago mm -hmm. who violated his wife 
and then he had the audacity mm -hmm. to want to join the entourage of the president. How dare you? You've just been convicted. And because you paid a million, you really thought you would go and try to be in the, the on the forefront? No. And I stood my ground. And indeed, I stepped on some toes. Oh. <laughs> but it was okay. I mean, deliberately so. Yeah. yeah you know? For a good cause. Why not? So we need to have that register. Mm -hmm. We need to have that register because when we have people like that, if they pay their one million, but they are more, you see, they are more into their ego they are more into their personality they, you know oh. you know so if you can dance that because they've danced dented somebody else's mm -hmm. then it is good but we, we glorify them afterwards you know they go and pay and so that's it. and that's it um we well, need then how will it stop <laughs> you know? it will stop when how we as women measures? no we, we yes. the measures will be there but we need to advocate and act more we cannot just have this occasional, oh, we the women, yeah. we the women, them. Oh, please, <laughs> you know, it's like a do something. It's a cliche. And they are laughing. Seriously, this is, this is what you get in, in some quarters. You talk about women's issues. Hey, but let her left free. They're women, they're no more. But yes, when it's time for elections, the women become very important. True. Okay? And uh, when it's time to, you know, crowd, mm -hmm. to get crowds, yes, it's the women. Mm -hmm. So women need to use their comparative advantage to yeah. actually take up issues and not personalities. What would you say for you is the biggest achievement so far in your life? Or what, what counts so much, you know, what counts so dear to you? What, yeah. Motherhood. Being a mother is my biggest achievement. Um, my daughter, having my daughter changed my perception on life. Mm -hmm. It is the biggest aphrodisiac. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 she's my inspiration. I wake up every day and I want to do more because I want her to see how it could be done and how she can also contribute to society. So motherhood, just being the mother of Jemi Fudia Fufana is my biggest achievement. <laughs> I love that. Yes. That's inspiring. Oh, it is, yes. You yes. make me feel like I should go get, okay, go, go get a husband for a second. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, I think, I think, I mean, uh, children are a blessing. Mm -hmm. And um, it doesn't matter whether you have 10 or 12 or one, mm. I think um, uh, the experience is if you if you've been blessed to have that, you should really appreciate it. I, I it's my biggest. I can drop everything today when it comes to my to my daughter. You know, you can do everything to me, but when you cross the line with my child, then um, nothing nothing stands between me and you anymore. <laughs> you know, so she is my greatest achievement because I have something that I can say. With everything else, nobody's going to ever duplicate me. Yeah. Nobody's going to replace me. Being her mother, she's stuck with me, I'm stuck with her. So <laughs> that's the biggest achievement. She cannot be stripped off from you. No, I, I can get delinked from the father, but the only person that I will never get delinked from, biologically or physically, is my child. And so motherhood is my greatest achievement. Oh, thank you so much for being on the program. And um, this is amazing. This is amazing. Having a good time, an inspirational moment with you. And I'm excited, you know. Um, I'm also very particular mm -hmm. about um, women mm -hmm. standing up and being a voice yeah. for ourselves. And um, yeah, that's why I really, really try to get you on the show. It's, yeah, I want to know who you are, but then again, I want to know what you've done, what you're doing in the background. And I'm happy you're voicing out all your plans. And I'm sure lots of women out there listening and watching right now who would also want to be part of the NASA performance movement, and I would gladly oblige. Oh, Team NASA. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Okay, um, we'll come back to personal. Okay. Tell me, what's your favorite color? I'm wearing it. I like burgundy. Okay. Okay, so and you'll see. What colors? So if you say burgundy, I have no idea. Uh, something like what I'm wearing. It's not red, red it's between red and, and, wine, boy, and wine. Yes, red. something, something like that. Okay. You know, I like burgundy. It's my favorite color. I like purple, so oh, you yeah. see, I burgundy purple. and purple. Um, those are my two favorite colors. Okay, yes, and I like white. Oh, cool. Yes. Do your colors, um, do they reflect anything about you? Do they say anything about you, the colors you like? Um, yes, because um, burgundy is um, bright but also subtle. Okay. It's kind of like a subtle okay. brightness, yes, yes. yes. And, um, uh, you know, so is... Um, um, 
is purple, you know, but they are very sharp. And dull at the same time, huh? Yes, because I think um, when you don't know me, um, when... <laughs> no, no, it's a harsh. Well, you know, I live <laughs> with that. But I, I remember um, an incident with my, um, with my ex-husband. We went to an event and one of his colleagues said, you know, who's, who've been speaking to me at home and we went with him and said, so, oh, Mr. Fofana, John, you know, your wife, she is so nice. My goodness. It's a pleasure meeting you, Mrs. Fofana. And she's so quiet. And my husband jumped so, what? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say she was quiet? I said, but of course I'm quiet. <laughs> you know, I look very quiet. So I think the colors are like that. You, 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 you know, you, they grow on you. And I think um, uh, that's, that's my personality. I grow on people. I need to be sharp where I need, need to, to be, be sharp. And um, that's like just, subtle yeah, need to, need to be subtle. What's your favorite food? <laughs> <laughs> Kring, kring, yes. I eat rice all the time. Okay. You know, I'm it's not. interesting how you're not adding too much weight up there. <laughs> there is not much here. And that's what I was saying. Well, you I think. Your rice, rice, rice. Because I know rice. Adds it's carbohydrates. Have you have you seen Asian people getting fat? Obesity, you don't find Asia, o obese yeah, Asian people. Know, what is their staple food? Right, but they, they, they take some things, you know, that keep them... You do no, there is some vegetables. Oh, no, I'm going to start now. Listen, I... I, I, I Join me every Saturday. Exactly, I will do that. <laughs> but um, rice and greens, our, our food is very healthy. Okay, so I, li I eat a lot of coconut oil. Mm -hmm. And I eat my... I eat. I really eat. Okay, it's just that... You know, I'm not busty. Which is good. That's what I'm saying. You, you eat and uh, you have a very good um, body shape. I think because my brain is always working. working. So I think there must be a correlation between Some brain activity way. and weight loss. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I don't know how, how that happens. But I think maybe genetically too, because um, my mother, my mother's side, uh, my parents' side, we're not really, we're not, we're not heavy. Yeah. You know. All right. Uh, we've come to the most important parts of this program. Really? <laughs> And okay. Like, okay. Yeah. What I've said. Oh, I've said is not important. <laughs> okay. No, it is. Yeah. But what I mean is, um, this is Live Your Dreams, a program that is meant to inspire people. Yeah. Across the globe, whoever you are, whatever they are, you know, this is the point where you you talk to them and say, this is who you you have to be, if you have to live your dreams, if you must be somebody who achieves something in the future, or if you're somebody who would eventually get to the point of your goal, how do you go about it? Tell somebody out there, encourage them, you know, tell them who they can be, even if they don't really, really believe in themselves. So, over to you. It's very difficult to um, sometimes believe in yourself and believe in your aspirations, but um, I want you to know that we have all been there, me, here, I have gone through a lot of the roads you might be going through now. Then on cool waking a Swiss cats. Then one day waking one try for touch you sideway not for touch. We've all gone through it, you know. So it is not like I'm talking to you because I am looking a lot nicer today. I have had to walk my way through those situations, you know, where all you need to say sometimes, and sometimes you're unable to say so, is no. Sometimes the people who violate you are very powerful people within your own family. And it is very difficult. It's a very lonely space to be sometimes. But you need to understand that today, as I speak to you, you have women like us. You have organizations. The government is a lot more proactive in protecting you, even though we know we have challenges. So you can do it. The first thing you need to do is to sign a social contract with yourself. At an earlier age, I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be somebody in my society that would create impact. I didn't know what, in which way, but I just knew I wanted to get to the top. Today, I have managed that regardless of all the challenges. It has not been a smooth ride. So every day when you have a challenge in your life, you need to know that, one, I need to have an education. You really do if you have the opportunity. If you don't have the opportunity right now, I went to school as a matured student. You can still go to school in your 30s, in your 40s, in your 70s. It is okay. But if education for me, without education, it's very difficult to maneuver what you want to do. So negotiate your future. You can have a lot of money, but you need to be able to have the basic formal education to support you. So being pregnant, 
very early is not going to be very supportive, even though you should be able to come back and get to school. But we want you not to get pregnant at all. We want you to say no. We want your assets to be your brain and not your breast and your shape and your physique. It could be, it's still an asset, but it should not be in your head the main asset. The way you carry yourself, the way women and young girls, you don't need to leave everything out. You can still be covered and look very sexy. I am very sexy. Okay, so you can be sexy with your long sleeve, you know, and your, 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 your dress. You need to look, you need to look like a lady. You don't need to look like somebody who somebody needs to touch. It is not an excuse, but also your presentation is important. And be humble, be respectful. Believe in yourself is the only way others can believe in you. There is hope for you young people. We are all around and we're here to support you. Contact us, we will support you. But please, 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 cross your legs and be a good girl. You, the girls, you are our future. The boys will support you. The men will support you when you've made the points. Say no to sex and decrease teenage pregnancy. <laughs> Thank you so much for the last performance. It's good having you on the show today. And I'm, I'm inspired. I'm sure every other person is, is inspired already. And that's how we close the curtains for today. Whoever you are, whatever you are, wherever you are, keep believing in yourself. Have the confidence, work hard, pray hard, do all you can do, but keep your mind focused on the goal, which is to succeed. Believe in yourself. No one else will believe in you if you do not start believing in yourself. So till I come your way again, it's Leave Your Dreams with me, Esther Michael Emma. Don't forget to not miss the next episode on this program. I'm sure you've been inspired. Keep believing and definitely you will get there. It's been a wonderful time. I'm Esther Michael Emma. Don't forget you're watching Star TV. Keep it locked on Channel 21. Aspiration is what you need to get you through in life. It's Leave Your Dreams with me, Esther Michael Emma. This is a show that empowers you to believe in yourself. Dream it, see it, believe it, it's all in you. Catch it on this channel every Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and be inspired.